Being color neutral means you can start the solve on any cross color. So if you happen to find one cross that's easier than the others, then you can start on that cross color instead and then just do the rest of the solve. So being color neutral has the advantage of being able to start on any cross, but it's hard to learn it because you have to learn all the new color patterns. So if you're used to white and you start doing a solve like this, then your brain will probably be filtering out yellow and trying to look for white, which is not very useful because white and yellow are not special in this case. Red and orange are the special colors. So before I talk about how to become color neutral if you're not, I'm gonna talk about dual color neutrality, which means you can solve one cross color or the opposite cross color because they will have similar color patterns. So often people will learn white cross and then if they get a bad cross on white, then they'll pick yellow instead. So now for transitioning to full color neutrality, there are generally two ways that people will approach it. The first way is to just become color neutral. So that means that you just start solving on every cross color. Uh, maybe ignore white if you already start with white because it's not worth practicing it if you're practicing all the other colors. So I think the advantage of this sort of method is that you can get into it right away and you learn all of them at the same speed. So you kind of pick up the patterns as you go. I think the main downside to this is that the improvement per color will be very, very slow. So your ability to recognize color patterns quickly is not necessarily going to come fast enough where you feel like it's worth it, and it can definitely be discouraging. The other approach people will take to become color neutral is to instead practice each color one by one. And I used to not be color neutral, and now I am. Uh, this happened when I was averaging about 20 seconds, and I spent a couple of months practicing it this way. So I'm gonna say this way was better for me, for the way I learn, but I'm not gonna say it's gonna be better for everyone. I think that it just depends on how you like learning. So the advantage of this way is that you can see immediate results in your ability to recognize color patterns because you're doing the same color over and over. So you don't have to learn a lot at once. So then for me, I improve my green from about 25 seconds to 24 or 23 seconds. And then I moved on to the next color, which was red. And then of course I was really bad on red, but then I managed to improve that to about 22 seconds. Then I moved on to blue, got that to about 21 seconds. Then orange got that to about 20. And then that all took about two or three weeks, just spending a couple of days on each of the colors. And I did yellow at the end because I thought it would be the easiest, but it actually was not all that easy. So uh, yeah, all of the colors, you will have to put in work for it. So after a few weeks, you could say I was color neutral, but I was technically still better on white. It was a couple of months before I was approximately equal on all of them, still a little bit better on white. And I'd say about a year after that, I finally became perfectly equal on every color. So all the other colors just slowly, slowly caught up to white as I got used to all of it but the actual practice only took a few weeks and most of the getting used to it only took about two months. So that's pretty much it, the two approaches to becoming color neutral. I think you should just pick depending on how you like to learn. I like to learn concrete things, uh, which is why I picked one color at a time so I don't have to learn as much at once. So now with that out of the way, I'm gonna talk about a few misconceptions about color neutrality and some tips at the end. So number one is people think that you always get an easy cross if you're color neutral. You get easy crosses often enough, but that's not always true. This one, yeah, this one is not that easy. Like the finger tricks were not very nice for this one. I guess it was kind of an easy solution to come up with, but let's try another one. So I'm just doing whatever I see and I'm not going to like try to construct hard cases where there's no good cross. But as you can see from this case, there is definitely no good cross here. Uh, I think I might actually go for white, but it's not very good. Maybe I missed an easy cross, but anyway, you only have 15 seconds to find it, so you're not gonna look at every single cross color. And that actually goes into the second misconception. Misconception number two, you always get to find the best cross. So no, you don't always get to find the easiest cross. Like for example, in this particular case, I think white might be fine, but I'm not even gonna look at white because the first things I look for is this, this. So obviously the first thing I'm gonna check is blue, right? Uh, well, blue is okay. Uh, I think yellow, if I didn't like blue, then I would check yellow as well because it also has this. So in general, I don't check any colors that don't have things attached already and uh, only in extreme cases. So I'll maybe spend a few seconds, decide one cross is really bad, even though it has stuff attached and then move on to a different one. But in this case, I'm definitely using yellow or blue, even though white, orange, green, or red might have a better cross, I'm not even gonna check those. So if you're perfect, of course you could check all of them, but there are more important things to look for. So finding an okay cross and then finding the first F12 pair is way more important than just finding the best cross. Misconception number three, it only saves one move. So last year I made a Q&A that included stuff about color neutrality. I did a little experiment to see how many moves it saved. So on average, picking the cross that I would use, not necessarily the best move count cross, 
versus picking the white cross every time saved only one move. Now that experiment wasn't wrong and other people have replicated the experiment too. It's just that it's not true that it only saves one move. So for any of you guys who do two by two, you know that like inserting a corner in three moves makes the solve so much easier to look ahead to what your last layer will be versus four moves versus five moves versus six moves. As you increase one move each time, it gets much, much harder to predict what's gonna happen next. And the same idea happens for making the cross. When you make the cross, if it takes five moves versus six moves, just saving one move can make it really easy to look ahead to your first pair. And if you save just a little bit of time looking for first pair, maybe you can start thinking about the second pair. Or if you're not at that level, that extra one move could be the difference between finding three cross pieces versus finding four cross pieces during inspection, which can actually save you like a whole second or two. So just saving one move doesn't mean you just save one move. It means you actually get to save a lot of prediction and looking ahead during the beginning of the solve. Misconception number four, you have to be color neutral to be good. So Felix and Max Park are color neutral, but there are examples of people who are not color neutral and are still really good. So if you're looking for excuses for why you're not good, it probably has nothing to do with color neutrality. So my personal opinion on being color neutral is that you should do it if you want to, not because you feel like you need to. I personally did it because I wanted to, but I was perfectly aware of the fact that color neutrality does not actually save that much time during a solve. So lastly, I'm just gonna give some tips if you're trying to be color neutral. So first is uh, you don't have to memorize the color scheme on every single side. That just doesn't really make sense. Even when I used only white, I did not know the color scheme around. Well, like I did, but I didn't use it to help me build the cross. You should just look at the centers every time and that should be good enough. Now, no matter which level of color neutrality you decide to learn, you should try to do the same things in your solves that you would normally do if you just did white cross. So uh, for example here, if I'm doing a blue cross and I'm trying to look for first F12 pair because I do that in my regular solves, then I'll do it for blue cross as well. So here I see that this corner is gonna end up over here and uh, this edge is gonna end up over here. So then I'm going to do this right away. But then once you get to the next pairs and look ahead, this is where it's most uh, problematic to become color neutral because you don't know any of the color patterns and your brain's filtering system doesn't work anymore. So if you're filtering white here, you notice the cross isn't solved and we have some these pieces, we should ignore these pieces. And that's just not gonna work here. So here, what you should do is if you're stuck, just pause for a second, try to filter out green. So look at everything that's not green and try to filter in blue. So essentially this piece is important, this is important, this is important. And then try to just quickly scan for edges that are not green as well. So this, 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 and uh, that's it. Okay, and then now I'll do a cross on orange just to show what I mean. And so I'm, whoops, uh, insert this pair into here and then now filter out red, stop looking at red and then uh, try to find everything that's orange. And so um, something like this looks like a useful piece if you're used to white, but this is not a useful piece because now you should be filtering out red. So in general, if you do a certain cross color, always try to think specifically about which colors you need to ignore or look for. Okay, I have orange and I have red. Think really hard about that and don't forget that during the whole solve. So one mistake I made really often when doing color neutral solves was stuff like this. I'd have this corner and this edge and I'd realize that they pair together, but then I'd forget that orange is specifically what I'm looking for because that's my cross color. And then I would just default back to white. So then if the white sticker was here and this one was oriented here, then I would do it like this. And that would leave me with unsolved things. So. Yeah, this happened quite often. So the middle of the solve is a little bit too late to think about what colors you're filtering, and then you should be thinking about that in the beginning. So as soon as you pick orange cross, just remind yourself to think about orange and red as you continue the solve. And of course, this is gonna become natural and you won't have to do it as you get better at being color neutral, but as you're learning, I think this is a pretty important thing to make the learning process faster. And then one last thing is if you don't decide to be color neutral, you still have to be somewhat color neutral on these cubes. For two by two, you have to make the layer or side on any color, which should be easy because you get inspection time. And then for the last layer, you're pretty much only looking at one color, so it should be pretty easy. Now on big cubes, you need to make the centers starting on any color and uh, for six by six, know the color scheme on any color. But then when you get to the cross, of course, if you're not color neutral, then you can just go back to white. Now for three by three and four by four, obviously if you're not color neutral on three by three, you're not color neutral. But then for four by four, since you should be using the Yao method, it is the best method. Uh, that makes the cross partway through the solve. So it doesn't make sense to start on any centers. You need to start on white or yellow centers in order to do that. But for these cubes, you have to be able to start the solve on any side. So yeah, that's it for this video. If you wanna be color neutral, make sure you really want to be color neutral because the payoff is very small and it takes a long time. The only thing that motivated me to be color neutral is I thought it would be cool, and that's it.
Anyway, thanks as always to my patrons on Patreon and also to all of the people commenting who were requesting this video. That's it for now, and see you guys next time.